I honestly feel that NATO needs to be disbanded. Really, why? Uh, if Ukraine gets admitted into NATO, is that something you want? Because you'd probably be in line for a draft. Russia said they were going to get to Kyiv in three days, and that was two years ago. Trump was told repeatedly, over and over, that there's no evidence of election fraud, yet he still called Raffensperger. Well, you know, why Why do we even have an interest to be over there? Well, for a few reasons. First of all, Zelensky is becoming more and more Western-aligned. And when you have Vladimir Putin, who we can agree is a murderous dictator, okay. right? When he invades his next-door neighbor, who's a sovereign country, uh -huh. and tries to grab that land, not only does that violate international law, but it's just not a precedent that we want to set. If we yeah. set that precedent, what if Xi Jinping wants to invade Taiwan? And then Oh, I know. I mean, I mean all of these scenarios are, are up in the air. But let me ask you this. Do you know, do you know about when the fall of the Soviet Union? Union happened yeah, when, yeah. when we when we agreed not to expand NATO east towards the Russian border. First of all, what you're talking about is James Baker and Gorbachev making an agreement that they wouldn't expand one inch eastward. But this wasn't a formal agreement. This was just a passing conversation about military expansion. And if you want to talk about breaking deals, Vladimir Putin broke the Budapest Memorandum, which said that if Ukraine gives up their nukes, then Russia will never invade them. Can yeah. you see where I'm coming from when I say that if Xi Jinping is looking to invade Taiwan and he sees that America doesn't care, America America will just yeah. let people invade their next door neighbor. It's almost yeah. like an exact same situation. Can you see how they'd be like, okay, we can just invade Taiwan with no repercussions? Well, I, I believe that China will invade Taiwan, yeah. and I believe it's because of Joe Biden's weakness well, and his weak policies. We're, set, we're setting the precedent right now by sending equipment to Ukraine that we use hard power to protect sovereign nations, and yeah. we do the same to Taiwan. And yeah. now China is going to look to us and be like, okay, if the U.S. is going to do what they're doing to Russia, we're not yeah. going to invade Taiwan. So if Donald J. Good. Trump was in the White House, none of this stuff would be going on right now. You think so? I, I know so, because it didn't happen when he was in office before, because, you know, peace through strength, there's there's something to be said about that. You know, you have to have, you have to have strong leadership. Isn't, isn't, so I'm going to flip what you said back at you. Yeah. Isn't peace through strength exactly what we're doing with Ukraine? We're exerting hard power, no. sending them this equipment. So this guy's worldview is entirely incoherent. He thinks Joe Biden is being weak, but he also wants to disband NATO. But then he also wants to achieve peace through strength. Everything this guy is regurgitating has the fingerprints of Vladimir Putin and other Russian propagandists all over it. We're getting really, really close to um, going to World War III. Well, think about Especially with putting trying to put Ukraine into NATO. Well, no, think about this. We've tried so hard to keep this war contained in Ukraine's borders. Yeah. If Russia was able to march in Ukraine and just take it, and they try to take another country, that'll trigger Article 5 in NATO, and then that's actually World War III. If Russian soldiers and NATO soldiers cross swords, I'm sure, sure you know oh, yeah. that's instant World War III. Well, especially if, you, uh, if Ukraine gets admitted into NATO. Is that something you want? Because you'd probably be in line for a draft. <laughs> it doesn't matter if I want Ukraine to be in NATO. What matters is that the Ukrainian citizens want to be a part of NATO. Because the process is the Ukrainian citizens, the Ukrainian government have to agree. NATO has to agree. It's like a multifaceted process, which I'm sure you're aware of. Yeah. So it's not really whether I want it. It's not whether Vladimir Putin wants it. It's more about what the citizens of Ukraine want. Can you agree with that? Sovereign nations well, to be able to I, choose. Well, I will tell you this. Um, I, I honestly feel that NATO needs to be disbanded. Really? Why? I, I, I feel that NATO is too much into warmongering. Um, and they they are not for the people's interests. I think NATO benefits you more than you realize, right? I've been on this earth for almost 53 years. Yeah. I've worked with NATO. I've been on a NATO staff. Yeah. I will tell you, I, I, so, I've got a little bit more knowledge than that. The fact that this guy has been on the planet for 53 years, and he also worked closely with NATO, yet doesn't understand the importance of it, kind of scares me. The fundamental principles behind NATO are collective defense and deterrence, not warmonger. Trump and MAGA have convinced themselves that NATO is this expansionary organization that goes and takes over countries against their will, when that's the exact opposite of how it works. The world order that we're in right now benefits us. If NATO didn't control the world Did you order... Say the world order? That was a rookie mistake on my part. You're talking about the new world order, no, right? No, 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 The current world order. Well, that's pretty much what we're going into right now, okay, is the new world you. order. The U.S. is the strongest country in the world right now, militarily right now. Right now. You don't think so? No, no. no. We're, we're on our knees right now. You don't think we have the strongest military who's stronger than us 
China. You Russia. think so? China. Dude, have, have you seen Have you Russia seen said, some of the training videos that Ru come out of those Russia those said, countries? Russia said they were going to get to Kiev in three days, and that was two years ago. So I don't China's believe that their military. Is China's buying up all our land by the by the uh, military bases. Yeah. Biden's letting them do that. <laughs> yeah. I know this though. I've seen training videos from Russia. I've seen training videos from China, the yeah. Chinese army, and then I've seen our army commercials that are woke so and you cannot defeat an army that's that's a mental disorder right there by the way anyway um that girl was yelling f you trumpers and i, I think we're all on her side but i was working so i didn't say anything about it I forgot my train of thought. We benefit from NATO more than we realize because yeah. the U.S. being the strongest country in the world, who is at the top of NATO basically, controlling NATO is better than Russia, China, or Iran being at the top of the global order. Can you agree with that? We wouldn't want Russia, China, or Iran. Well, I, I I agree that the U.S. is a, is a great leader. Yeah. Uh, but I, I I feel like we need to change direction at home and and with our foreign policy. So what kind of great leader just lets an authoritarian dictator? march into their next door neighbor when their next door neighbor is our ally if we're leaders in the world order we need to be making sure that we're yeah. keeping the world order and that iran russia and, and china aren't superseding and, us and in that who way. and who was at the helm in the united states when when putin went into the ukraine yeah. you think putin makes decisions solely based off other countries or based off deeper things than that so this is a really common maga talking point the idea that ukraine would have never been invaded if trump were still in office but this just isn't borne out anywhere first of all to point out the obvious trump was way friendlier with putin than any Democrat in recent history has been. Also, Crimea was invaded in 2014, but Trump still had four years during his presidency to do something about that, and he didn't. So this idea that he would apply pressure to Putin or be much rougher on Russia just isn't true. And also, the amount of factors that went into Vladimir Putin's decision far outweigh just who is the U.S. president at the time. We were just coming off the back of a global pandemic that Putin was trying to exploit. 2020 was a stolen election. You think so? Oh, I've seen the evidence. What evidence? Go to frankspeech.com. Um, there's video evidence that uh, that talks about uh, cyber cyber attacks. Yeah. Um, there's also another uh, movie called 2000 Mules, I've which seen it, yeah. you've seen it. Oh yeah. All right, that's that's pretty hard to refute. Yeah. That evidence is difficult to refute. All of that evidence was brought to courts by Donald Trump, and it was yeah. refuted. But it it wasn't it wasn't uh, seen because it didn't have standing. Yeah. Right. That didn't mean that there was no evidence it there. It didn't have standing because there was no evidence, basically. Oh no no. No, 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 no. There, there, there is evidence. So I'm going to give you a concrete example and see if you've all. So I think you've probably seen a video from Georgia where somebody is pulling the suitcase from under the desk. Yeah. And that video blew up. And you think that's absolute concrete evidence of election fraud. It's like a five second clip. And that's supposed to be very incriminating evidence. But that's Donald, all you saw was five seconds. I saw a lot more than five seconds of that video. Well, let me tell you, Donald Trump took that to court to a Republican judge. Right. That Republican, Republican judge. Republican judges are bought off too. But they looked over that full 16 hours of footage from the day and they figured out that all of that was completely legitimate. They literally have released all of the footage and it was just them placing ballots from that they like locked up earlier in the day. So, it was So this is what people are failing to talk about when they talk about that there's no evidence of, of election fraud. Yeah. What people are failing to talk about is who was at Epstein's island. Uh -huh. That's a really good point. Now that he puts it like that, yeah. So I've seen 2,000 Mules. I know Dr. Frank's speech. I've been on that website. Mike Lindell, I know all of this. Yeah. Basically, I'm going to run you down my whole argument. So sure. Trump brought 60 cases to courts. They all got rejected. You think that the evidence wasn't looked at. But I think it was. Then people in Trump's cabinet, people like Mike mm -hmm. Pence told them, hey, the election wasn't stolen. People like Bill Barr, who was the sword and shield site, hey, the election mm -hmm. wasn't stolen. Then Trump went and hired cyber ninjas to forensically analyze the election. Mm -hmm. Cyber ninjas came back to Trump and said, hey man, there's no evidence of election fraud. Trump fired them. He hired another team. They analyzed it. They said, hey, there's not enough evidence to overturn the election. You got to stop peddling this stuff. Trump fired them. <laughs> Trump was told repeatedly over and over that there's no evidence of election fraud, yeah. yet he still called Raffensperger. He still yeah. called all of these governors and yeah. tried to pressure them to find these votes. That's how yeah. I, can you, you really, you really believe that? Can you, you really, you really believe what you're telling me? Absolutely. 100%. And can you understand where I'm coming from? Well, I can understand where you're coming from, but I also know that that uh, based on based on research that I did, that uh, the night of the election, Trump 
and uh, members of the military were over at the Eisenhower skiff. You know what a skiff is, right? Where you keep documents, right, for Congress? Yeah, and it's where you can monitor certain things. Yeah. They they monitor they monitored the steel. Mm -hmm. I'm a retired first sergeant from the Army, and then working as a Department of the Army civilian uh, in Hawaii. I got uh, caught up under the federal uh, VAX mandate, so. I wound up having to walk away from my job, a job that I loved. And that's based off of, you know, Biden's policy of, of you know, people ha having to get uh, uh, the vaccine, which is totally unconstitutional. Donald Trump has been derogatory towards military members multiple times. He said nasty things about John McCain in the past. Uh -huh. So what do you think about that? Well, I will tell you, given that uh, I was military, the military folks, the military folks that I know, um, are we very supportive of Donald Trump. Thank you for talking to us, sir. We, we're on a time Thank limit, you. but it was really nice that we were able to like have a really normal conversation. Absolutely. This needs to happen more in, oh, yeah. if we want our democracy to succeed, right? Well, our, our democracy is a republic, actually. So, so, we, Read so, book. so, we, so we live in a republic, but we govern by democracy. And I think a lot of people fail to realize well, that. Well, they're not mutually exclusive. So we're a representative democracy where the people elect politicians to vote for us, but we're also a republic because yeah. of that. So they're not mutually exclusive. I hope you guys enjoyed that conversation. Every time I thought it was over, we would get into a new dialogue tree about democracy or about election fraud, but I'm very happy with how it went. And if you like what I'm doing, the best way you can support is genuinely just to leave a like, leave a comment with a blue heart, and make sure you have notification bells turned on for my channel so you don't miss an upload. Thank you and have a great day.